According to the World Health Organization, over one in three people are affected by neurological conditions, one of the leading causes of disability worldwide. Today, we are looking at epilepsy and other neurological conditions around the world. Stay tuned, the conversation begins after this break. is still sound health on Lagos television. Joining us via Zoom this evening is neuroscientist Mutada Bankole, um, a clinical physiologist in neurophysiology, assistant director, sciences at Luth, EEG at Luth. Uh, he is also an advocate. He is also an epilepsy advocate. He is also an epilepsy advocate, PRO Nigerian League Against Epilepsy, and executive council member epilepsy alliance africa he is also the founder of the epilepsy ambassador initiative good evening neuroscientist bankole and thanks for joining us uh, good evening uh, and thank you for um, having me here today over 80 percent of neurological conditions and health loss occur in low and middle income countries how did we get here? Yeah, um, you know, uh, the reason why it happened is because of the treatment uh, gap. Okay, when you compare the low income countries uh, with the developed countries, like in some Sub Saharan African countries, you have like a, a particular a doctor to more than uh, 1 million or like to more than 300 to 500 patients. Okay, when it comes to neurological care. You even have some countries who don't have more than one neurologist. And when it comes to neurology disorder, there are a lot of specialists. Some are taking care of people uh, with movement disorder, some of them for headaches and pain, some for epilepsy care and the rest. And when you have in a country just one neurologist, you could imagine the kind of uh, challenges such kind of uh, country will be having. So it's not perfect, the reason why that, uh, uh, what they call statistics is there. The treatment, uh, the gap between the, the patient available as well as uh, the doctors that take care of them shows a lot of uh, reason why we're finding it difficult to meet up with the World Health Organizational requirement for treatment of uh, most of the neurological disorders. What are these neurological conditions? You have headaches. You have movement disorder, you have epilepsy, you also have uh, people with stroke, uh, cerebral vascular uh, diseases. And uh, uh, you have couples of other ones too, like, uh, uh, what are they called? But there are a lot of them. Any, any condition that are for one reason or the other that affect the normal functioning of the brain, okay, is a neurological condition. You can give it for several days, okay? But there are a lot of them. So names are given based on the area that is affected in the brain and uh, uh, what uh, function of the body is affected. Like, uh, for example, the cerebral vascular is actually as a result of uh, blood not getting to the brain as that went you. So it brings about the result, it brings about the stroke in most cases. Okay? And for epilepsy, is as a result of a recurrent uh, seizure. It's also one of the conditions, okay, that affect the brain. 
between in the neurological condition to, uh, uh, as well. Also, stroke. They also have Parkinson, uh, Parkinson, uh, Parkinsonian uh, condition where people find it difficult, okay, to respond in time to uh, external stimulus. Okay, so there are lots of them. It only depends on uh, uh, which part of the brain is affected and what function that part is concerned. Okay, um, these health conditions, the neurological conditions, you mentioned headache as one of them. Many people ignore um, headache, health conditions or symptoms as little as headache. Um, could this be attributed to some lifestyle, um, lifestyle changes or are there other predisposing factors here? Okay, um, not many would regard epilepsy as a neurological condition. Tell us, um, how do you want um, members of the public to change their um, perception about um, this neurological condition? Sometimes you fall down. That is 
Why? Every one of us, because we are conscious, we see people in front of us, we talk to them. But when the brain malfunctions, sometimes you find it difficult to communicate. You find it difficult to, think, to, to get to be aware of someone in front of you. Because the part of the brain, just like a transformer that controls that part, is malfunctioning. When we think this way, we will understand what is going on in the life and in the brain of people that are living with epilepsy. Okay, um, neurosciences, Bankoli. How can such person or such people live a meaningful life, um, um, ensure that their brain or neurological um, system becomes um, optimal? What is, uh, would you understand what epilepsy is? Everybody should learn. Okay? Get, everybody has a phone. You don't just call and Google all kinds of things in wrong. Take your phone, test epilepsy, test vision disorder, get to know what it is. When you get to know it, then the next thing is stop discriminating against those who have it. When you stop discriminating against them, don't stigmatize them. Because, you know the reason why? You are looking at those people having it today and start discriminating and stigmatizing against them. Perhaps, your driver or someone that rides a uh, bike that you are following down to work, if you're living with epilepsy, they will not confidently, they will not confidently come out to tell you they are happy. Hmm. And you don't know you might be the main victim because your driver is having a heart attack. We just told you what happened. There could be an accident. And what happened in an accident, there could be trauma, either to the head or any part of the body. What you are afraid of, what you are running from, don't get stigmatizing. You will let you fall into their shoes. So the best thing is get to understand what is wrong with them. Okay? Show kindness. Embrace them. Don't stigmatize or discriminate against them. There are things they can do, just like others. Okay? You shouldn't just leave them out. Let's live an inclusive, all inclusive life. Let our society embrace everyone, irrespective of their condition. Okay? And okay. that is the best way. To bring them along and not to, you know, not to a kind of put them into a condition that will lead even to suicide. Okay? So I think that's what the best thing we can do for them. Embrace them, you know, let society be all inclusive so that everybody will be affected, irrespective of their condition. One thing I have noticed is there are people who have accidents, traumatic injuries, they had their growth. I had a fracture in my head. You have two who have diabetes, they'll tell you I'm, I'm diabetic and I'm, I'm using drugs. But we don't, we hardly see people who live with epilepsy and say it proudly that they have it. It's not for any reason. It's because we have stigmatized and we have given them names that is not physiological. Hmm. Is it that we say, uh, uh, someone is uh, 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 attacking them, is actually uh, a spiritual attack. Of mm. one wizard, which or all those kind of things. So it's difficult for them to actually come up because they are afraid of stigmatization. And this is what we should all do. We should stop it, we should embrace them, and try as much as possible to be kind to them. Can epilepsy and other neurological conditions be managed to ensure meaningful life? I would say it involves the continuation of lifestyle choices, habits, and strategies that promote great health and well-being. Here are some of them. I'll just give you an example. Number one, exercise regularly. And what do you exercise? When you exercise, what physical activity does is to really improve control to the brain, thereby boosting cognitive and even part of the brain. achieve optimal care for the brain so number one I will talk about exercise okay the reason why exercise is a uh, good is that it improves blood flow to the brain thereby boosting cognitive functions and 
neuroplasticity of the brain okay another one is sound sleep okay which you aim to sleep for like maybe seven to nine hours okay it may help our brain to consolidate memories and clear waste uh, as well as you know to repair itself all these things are necessary okay another one is eating balanced diet uh, which can as a result of that fuel our brain with nutrient rich food including fruits vegetables whole grains lean proteins and healthy fats okay so this can actually bring about optimum brain health care so another one i'll suggest here is uh, staying hydrated drinking plenty of waters throughout the day so that uh, we can maintain focus as well as uh, our brain functions properly uh, another one uh, that we also enhance uh, brain health is staying organized okay maybe we use tools like calendar or to do list you know always planning our time so that uh, we wouldn't be disorganized in what we do or get uh, how would i call it carried away in unnecessary tasks another thing i would like to suggest here is uh, we need to take breaks sometimes okay give our time our set times to rest and recharge also is um, sometimes uh, we should always practice gratitude we should reflect on things we are thankful for each day so um, maybe we're not stopping there i may still mention the fact that we need to stay focused and curious okay we should embrace lifelong learning and explore new interests okay so we should make sure we are getting enough vitamin D, okay, by maintaining adequate uh, vitamin D level as it is essential for our brain health, okay. So all these are suggested and uh, other ones that I may not even remember, okay, is one of those ways of taking care of our brain and is a long time investment, okay, for our overall uh, well-being by incorporating these tips into our daily life you'll be supporting your brain health and setting yourself up for a happier and healthier life by doing this ensure you protect your brain it is all you have it is the only key to your survival key to your existence um, neurological condition is still the number one leading cause of disability around the world um, ensure you protect your brain at all costs. Um, neuroscientist Mutada Bankole, um, clinical physiologist in neurophysiology, assistant director of sciences EEG Luth, um, um, an epilepsy advocate, PRO Nigerian League Against Epilepsy, executive council member, Epilepsy Alliance Africa, and founder the Epilepsy Ambassadors Initiative. Thank you so much for your time and expertise on epilepsy and other neurological conditions. Thank you for having me. Um, the group is a pleasure to be okay. Thank you for having me once again. Um, goodbye. Sound Health continues with trending health report from around the world. Please stay tuned.
it is good to know that all these neurological conditions such as stroke, meningitis, epilepsy can be prevented. They are preventable. They can equally be managed um, if you report symptoms early enough to the nearest um, specialist or nearest health facility. For comments and inquiries or you have topics you'd like us to treat, please send SMS to 3582 or follow us on social media at Lagos Television hashtag sound health. A sound health is a sound mind. Make healthy living your choice.